expensive versus, versus affordable. Greetings, I'm Chappers. I'm the captain. Well, look where we are. Where are we? We're in the middle of Gibson Land at Anderton has got Coach UK in Guildfordshire, and I had a cunning plan for a challenge. 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 Okay. So, if you go into a guitar store, particularly like Anderton's, you'll see some pretty expensive guitars and some pretty affordable guitars. Some very expensive guitars. And some very affordable guitars. But what if we took the most expensive guitar? The most expensive Gibson The most in expensive Anderton's. Les Paul. Is it the most expensive guitar as well? Uh, yes, I think it probably is. So the most expensive guitar in Anderton's. But we're taking the most expensive Les Paul versus the cheapest Les Paul. Les Paul. So let's find one. So here's where we're going to find the expensive Les Pauls because this is all the custom shop stuff. So we've got 58s and 59s and blues masters that we do. Five grand kind of looking Five dirty grand. things. That's, that's chicken feed. It's chicken feed. It's got to go than that. Um, we've got 335s and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, look, I'm, I'm, I know exactly where the most expensive Les Paul is. It is a true historic 1959 Les Paul in vintage dark burst. That's a snipper, only 7,000 imperial yep. credits of the realm. So what makes this crazily expensive is it's the only Les Paul that you can buy uh, where the manufacturing technique, uh, the dyes, the finishing, even right down to the plastic parts on here are as close to what you would have had in 1959 as you can possibly manufacture nowadays legally. You know, it's so expensive that even I will not attempt the comical, customary, pretend, drop, and then catch. Don't do that. So that's £7,000. Now, what's the most affordable? Now, actually, uh, we're shooting this video just after Christmas, and we've actually sold out of the very most uh, affordable. There is a Les Paul that we do for about £120. Huh. So currently, the cheapest Les Paul that we have is on this side. This is where we have Epiphone and bits and bobs like that. You can see a long wall of Epiphone guitars stretching down here, but the most affordable one is the signature version of oh, our really? dear friend <laughs> Slash. Uh, this is actually a pack, so for £169, I actually get a tuner you, and a gig yeah, bag well, as well. You're taking Man. the underdog side already, uh, um, taking the, the, the expensive no, side. No, I don't mind. So this is a, a bolt-on neck, slab top. Um, Does it come with a battery? Because you've got a tuner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, super high quality machine heads. <laughs> um, well, are they much better than these? Well, who I knows? Mean, take a look at this. So how many of these guitars could I buy for the price of this guitar? Let me see, oh so God. I could get about six for every thousand pounds and that's seven thousand pounds. So I could have about 35 <laughs> maybe of these guitars or one of these. Well, I know what I'd rather have. <laughs> so let's go back into the room and challenge the cheapest Les Paul in the store versus the dearest Les Paul in the store. Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. And I'm the Slash Captain. Let's pretend you had absolutely infinite money. 
<clears throat> maybe you I had. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Maybe you had so much money that you were like, you know what? I might walk into one of the best guitar stores in England, uh, maybe Anderton's, .co.uk and Guildford, and say, I want to buy the most expensive guitar you have, good sir, just to see what it's like, perchance. That would be this guitar. So. Yes, right now in Anderson, we do from time to time get other guitars that are more expensive than this, but right now if you come into Anderson's, typically speaking, the most expensive guitar that you will find is the Les Paul <coughs> True Historic. True Historic is a guitar that came out in 2015 where Gibson decided that for the real connoisseurs of Les Paul, the, for whom only you know, like a 58 or a 59 um, is the best. They would go back, they would source, remake, redesign, remanufacture all the tooling, all the processes, all the dyes, the glues, uh, even down to the plastic parts. They would retool up and source all the stuff to be exactly the same as it would have been uh, during that sort of golden era for, for Gibson. Um, the only stuff that obviously now wouldn't be on this guitar to make it authentic as, a, as a, an original one, would be stuff that maybe is illegal yeah. to, to, to use now. Um, so even down to the point where the colours that you can buy in this guitar are only the colours that they would have offered in 58, 59. And even down to the fact that they make as many as they would have made. Yeah, so they cap the production of these as well so that they physically can't make more than would have been made in a typical, you know, in, in one of those years. So. That, of course, adds an astronomical amount to the, to the price. It's impossible to correlate that extra price to some sort of tangible difference in the way the product performs compared to cheaper ones. It just is. So it's like, it's just, a, it's one of those, you know, it's just ludicrously expensive to do some of the stuff that they've done to make yeah. this guitar. So <laughs> therefore, it is what and it in is. in this case, the Custom Historic costs Seven thousand pounds. Seven thousand pounds. Yeah, comes with a case. Now, alternatively, <laughs> in one of those like Daz Challenge <laughs> corny adverts Daz from the eighties, like Danny Baker or, or 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 the bloke Alfie Moon from EastEnders, he go, "I oh, die. Would you swap your, you know, <laughs> Les Paul true true historic for seventy five of these um, or whatever?" So, that, so well, right, wait, it wasn't seventy five of those, was it? It was more. I think it was like thirty five or forty oh, of these or something like yeah, that. It's so. A lot. So down at the other end of the scale, as we said in the bit where we were in the store, I've grabbed currently the, the most affordable uh, guitar that still says Les Paul on it somewhere uh, that we sell, which is the, the Les Paul Special 2. Uh, we've got, this is the Slash version. Uh, there, is, there is a slightly cheaper version of this called the Les Paul uh, Special VE. Uh, which is like a, a, a satin finish version of yeah, those, yeah. but we've sold out. It's just after Christmas here in Anderton's Land, so we've sold out of those. But for all intents and purposes, this is about as affordable as you can get. So we have a bolt-on neck, slab body, um, and of course, you know, componently and materially. Um, it does come with a couple affordable. of extra bells and whistles that this does not. So, for example, you probably can't see by this amazing camera, the tuner. I bet they can. Secret, oh, maybe they can now. Secretly look. built into the pickup. Look. So, as you can see, as I strum each string, we get this little tuner on the side here tells me which string I'm playing and whether I'm flat or sharp on it like that. So, you know, hey, what are we doing? We're almost so. So, you know, if 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 you want a guitar with a tuner built into the pickup ring. This isn't for you. But I mean, I can rectify that problem by going That's to Planet Waves true. and saying, hey, Planet Waves, could you help me out with a little tiny headstock tuner? And then I, and then I have it already on this guitar. Now, th this, <clears> is a, this is really a, a sort of a, a just a, a, a challenge for a bit of fun rather than any kind of a, because, you know, realistically, we've talked before about um, the, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, diminishing returns. Yes. You know, so we absolutely know that <clears throat> uh, there aren't, 40 times as many features on this guitar as is on this guitar. No. And we absolutely know that as you get past a certain price point in any guitar manufacturer's range, the, the difference between how much extra you spend and how much better the guitar gets, you know, shrinks down and down and down and down. Yeah, um, but, but, but does, so it what sound, this? Yeah, does what, it sound 40 times better? It's, in the, it's all in the ears of the beholder, isn't it?
have this one, hadn't you? Wait! What about the game, Lee? tell you is that sounds fantastic to me it's kind of it's my kind of sound it's a, it's a, a valve amplifier with no pedals with a really great guitar played quite loud i think it sounds fabulous wait wait wait! i've got to take the tone strap the tone strap it's all in the it's tone my strap. own personal gibson tone strap right I just lost my microphone. I can see it going. Come on, where was it before, yeah? That sounded really good. Yeah, it just doesn't sound as good. Well, that's really up to the voting public. Well, no, if they I'm want just to vote. as entitled to have an opinion as they are. You are um, absolutely, and I would agree with you that this sounds considerably better, or just better. It just, it just had a, it just had a, a more character and something like it's a little bit more like, but much again, louder, much much in, louder. In terms of functionality, this all the notes work. You know, it's like, like yeah. you know, it makes a noise. It doesn't feed back. It's staying no. in tune. Um, all the it's stuff, 169 pounds of, of ridiculous guitar that is doing, you know, does it have a call tap? No, no, it doesn't. But it does good things, you know. It's 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 a comfortable guitar to play with a reasonable action. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have that instant. Oh, my hand was made to fit round this neck kind of feel. But it has a functional. You know, it works. Um, and I don't. I mean, this is probably the subject of a million YouTube videos now. Of, you know, there's really the the, the the over the last twenty years, absolutely. It's gone from you really needed to buy relatively top end to avoid the kind of crappy stuff. Well, nowadays there is now, no crappy no, stuff. No, now it's just kind no. of like the, the, the top end is really just there to treat yourself with. There's no yeah, you know, well, have it's, to do. It's yeah. interesting. While we were selecting these guitars, I did a funny psychological thing in my head and I told myself, oh yeah, imagine this is one of those weird 60s things that was like made but then never actually happened kind of vibe. And it's the bolt on LP with the sort of vintage tuners and you know, the plastic nut and all that. And I was like, oh yeah, I could get into that vibe of it. If you relic it, suddenly it's this like kind of quirky, old school yeah. Gibson vibe. And then suddenly it becomes a different thing in your mind. 
You know, yeah. I but, mean, there's no reason to suggest. I mean, one would expect that you know materials used for frets, <coughs> definitely, definitely, machine heads, stuff like that, are not Pops. going to stand up to the sort of you know the rigors that that the components on a more expensive guitar yeah. would, would stand up to. But again, don't get me wrong. We're not trying to go. Yeah, you need to go from 160 to 7,000 pounds to see that improvement. You know, you just need to go to like. Three, Whatever you can three hundred pounds, and you'll see a substantial <laughs> improvement from yeah. this guitar. Um, I just really want to hear you playing that guitar through the Red Dwarf. Is that is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> can put into words that would inspire me sorry that would justify this price but I think there's I think at some point or another it just becomes that sense of inspiration when you play an instrument yeah. that makes you that, that just <clears throat> does that now well this is the closest thing ever to the original yeah how much does the original cost well I mean I can tell you because you know a, a really good condition uh, with a nice burst on it 59, you know, it's going to set you back hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So we, we played some, haven't we, as well? Yeah, but that that's, I think, there'll be some players out there, you know, someone like Joe Bonamassa, for example, who will still champion this idea that the old stuff, because the wood is older and has yeah, had yeah. time to season, is still better. And therefore, a chunk of that price that you pay is for the instrument. But I think most people will accept that the vast majority of the price you pay for a vintage instrument is because of its collectible investment value. Yeah. You know, it's not about, oh, it's 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 some another level of instrument that you yeah, can yeah, pay. Yeah. I mean that's why you know it's a fairly safe the the white strat of Pete's that we were talking about, you know, yeah. if I if I buy that from from Pete and it, this is a if you haven't seen that video, it's a kind of a it's a 64 neck with a different body on it. So it's it's not never going to be worth as much as an original 64 Strat. But as long as as long as long I know what I'm buying and I pay a fair price for it, yeah. there's no gamble there. You know, like in, It'll in a year's value time, for it's going to be worth Yeah, it's a not ever going to get younger. You can't always say the same about brand new. You know, there probably is a period of time when you walk out the shop with this guitar that it's going to be worth less than what you just paid for it for a period of time. Uh, I but would, you wouldn't spend 7k on a guitar that you were going to keep for you know a couple of weeks. No, uh, I agree. And I and I and again, I, I'm I'm still a, you know, how expensive a guitar is is entirely relative to your bank yeah. balance. But let's be you honest, know? that's a great guitar. Yeah. I mean, if you if you're a guitar fan and you've got a hundred thousand pounds sitting yeah. in your bank account because you know whatever, then yeah. you I could mean, buy this and still have ninety three thousand well, left. Well, to be fair, you, you know? could buy two really great Les Pauls for the price of yeah. that. Two, you, you know, three could. and a half K full yeah. fat American Les Pauls, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think at that level, that's a good shout, you know, because yeah. the, the saying you could have 40 of these or one of these is a bit <laughs> ridiculous, because, really, you know, really, if, if you can afford one of these, you'd rather have one of these. You could microtonally tune every single but, one of them to a different area. But you're a good shout on that, you know, having two three and a half thousand pound guitars, which would both be absolutely be great. stellar. Yeah. And potentially quite different guitars. Maybe that is a better shout than having one £7,000 guitar. But but ultimately... It's so the message here is just buy more guitars. That's what we're saying. I don't even think there is a message here. Uh, my message has always been, don't criticise someone else for the choice that they've decided to make about the guitar yep. they want no to buy. No pay shaming. If someone wants to spend seven grand, that's their job, their point. Or if somebody likes money. relict looking guitars, yep. then that's their choice. Or if you want to spend choice? £169, yeah. go ahead and do it. I think for me, as long as you're playing guitar and making music and enjoying yourself, then that's all it's all about. Amen, brother. Let's jam out on something, but I'm going to use this guitar now and you can have okay. that one. I've got some interesting news in other news as well. Yeah. The pedals that I've been using recently in videos, which is the Luxury Drive and the Gristle King, I'm using the Gristle King now, uh, thanks to a very helpful chap on Facebook, I've actually found the company that still makes them. So um, you can go on our website and look for pedals. Oh, I'm never going to be able to pronounce the guy's name. It's, it's Tim Yawanig or Jawanig, but it's an American guy, J A U. 
E R N I G, and he designed these pedals and still makes them. So we found wow. them. We've awesome. rediscovered them. So anyway, I'm very happy about that. So very I should cool. be using them a lot. Right. Uh, let's just jam on some stuff then. Tell me about Rory. So he uh, edits videos. Rory's awesome. <laughs> <laughs>